What you guys got another video? Got an email from a couple of people called Robert and Stephen, uh, basically saying what settings should they turn off in Windows 11? They don't want to use any scripts or software. Is it possible to still achieve this in Windows? The short answer to that is yes, there's plenty of settings that you can manually turn off inside Windows and we'll go through some of the more uh, urgent ones that you should really turn off in this video uh, because there is quite a few ones that are related to adverts and also unwanted uh, programs like Copilot. If you need these, then obviously don't turn them off and the news feed there. But before we do all of that, let's have a quick word from today's video sponsor, CD Key Sales. If you're looking for a cheap Windows 10 Pro or a cheap Windows 11 Pro OEM key, then check out the links in the video description. Head over to their website, create an account and use my promo code capital B capital R 09. Apply that to your order. They will then send you your key. And basically you can use that key to activate your version of Windows like you see on the screen, or you can upgrade from home versions of Windows to Pro if you want to. Anyway, let's get back to the video. So first off, I would say go into your settings panel right here and go into the personalization and then come down to where it says device usage. This is so you can get personalized tips, ads and recommendations from Microsoft. If you don't want any of this stuff, then obviously you'll need to turn all of this stuff off. You can see development here, gaming, family, creativity, school, entertainment, uh, business and so on. So what you need to do here is go through here and turn all of this off because this is just going to be uh, personalized tips and ads, which they will obviously push through to you. So that's the first place to turn off. The next place is go back into your settings panel here. And what I would suggest you do is go to the system and then go to notifications. Inside here, this is where they're going to get notifications from apps and other senders. If you don't want to be disturbed, then you definitely want to turn the notifications off. And this will stop Microsoft from using this to uh, pump out a ton of um, you know, notifications to you. If you do want some notifications, then turn the notifications uh, tab back on and then select some of the apps that you want to have notifications for. For instance, it might be Windows Backup, uh, but you might not want to receive them for the other things. So just turn off some of the stuff that you don't want, or you can just turn it off completely and leave Do Not Disturb uh, Rocker Switch turned on. Additional settings, these are where uh, Microsoft are going to get tips and suggestions when using Windows. Also suggest ways to get the most out of uh, Windows and finish setting up this device and show the Windows welcome experience after updates when you sign in. If you don't want to see any of this stuff, then turn all of these off by unchecking them. So that's those taken care of. Let's move on to the next section. And the next section is going to be to do with, obviously, advertisements. And this is one of Microsoft's favorite little pastimes. They love adding tons of advertisements in Windows. So go into your settings panel, go to privacy and security, and then click on the general tab. And there's a few rocker buttons in here that you can toggle on and off. I personally turn all of these off, but there is the top one here, which is related to advertising ID. So I would definitely turn that off. And you can go through and read some of these and see whether they're uh, necessary for you. I would just turn them all off. I don't use any of this stuff. But if you do, then obviously you can leave these on. But basically, definitely turn the top one off. And there's some uh, other ones there as well, like improve start and search results by tracking app la uh, launches and things like that. And suggested content in your settings app, I would definitely turn off as well. But generally, just turn all of those off. Other than that, let's move on to the next little area here, which is very important, is inside your settings panel and uh, go up to your personalization here. And you're probably going to want to uh, configure some settings inside here, like your taskbar and things like that, because it's going to have a load of bloat on it. For instance, uh, the widget section, uh, which is this thing right here. If you use it, then leave it on. I personally don't use it. It's an eyesore and you can just toggle it off by turning it off like so. We also have other ones inside here as well, like this one here. You can turn it off called Task View and your search box. You don't have to have it as large as that. You can have a search icon if you want, 
or you can completely hide it all together. Those ones is the sort of settings I would have on mine. Uh, there's some other ones inside here that you might want to play around with, like the taskbar behaviors. This will allow you to align your taskbar to the left or leave it in the center. And there's also some other bits in here as well, which you might want to mess around with, depending on how you want to set yours up. So just go through here. But if you do want to align it uh, to the left, you would just change it here and that will change it to the left rather than having it centralized. And also you've got to remember some people have never used Windows 11 before. They've just upgraded from Windows 10 and maybe they're not used to Windows 11. So some of this stuff is pretty basic, but a lot of people might not be used to Windows 11. Inside the other system tray icons as well, I would just generally turn a lot of this stuff off because I don't really need it running, especially Microsoft OneDrive. I would uninstall all of that stuff and I'll share that a little bit later on. But once you've got these uh, set here, you can go into your personalization section and put it on dark mode like I've got here. Very simple, just change the theme and it's pretty good to go. Inside your settings panel under apps, what you want to do here is you definitely want to go into startup here and you want to toggle off any of the stuff you don't want starting up. This will take a lot of system resources and you want to turn a lot of this stuff off that you don't need. So turn off the stuff like, say, for instance, uh, Microsoft Edge and also Microsoft OneDrive and things like that because they are going to load up and it will also slow it down. So definitely want to turn those off. Let's move on to the next section right here. So around here, you can see we've still got a few icons here. You can remove some of this stuff like your Microsoft Store and Copilot if you wanted to. And you can do all that inside your apps and installed apps area. And you can just go ahead and remove Copilot here and uninstall it if you have no use for it. I would definitely do that. And there's also some other things inside here like Feedback Hub and stuff like that. I would definitely uh, do some of that and uninstall all of the bloat that you don't want applications that come pre-installed if you've just done a fresh install or upgraded from Windows 10 to Windows 11. I'd uninstall all of the stuff you don't need. There's also on 24H2 a item called Recall. You might want to disable that. I've made a video on that. I'm not going to go through it in this video, but you can go back and take a look at that video on disabling that inside the uh, Windows terminal. Next, you might want to get rid of these annoying adverts that are pumped up here or web search. You can get rid of that here. If you type edge, you'll see the search the web here. If you don't want to use any of this stuff, you can disable it. You will need to go into the registry editor to do that. And I'll quickly show you that. It's very straightforward and easy to do. And it just cleans things up a little bit and makes it a little bit more uh, easy and cleaner to navigate. So let's go to the registry editor by typing reg edit and you will need to navigate to this location right here. Go to H key current user and then go to software. And then from here, we want to go to Microsoft, open this one up right here. And then we, what we want to do is come all the way down to Windows, open that up and go to current version and then open that one up right there. And then what we want to do is we want to come down here and we want to look for search, open that up and once we get into the search area, we want to have a look on the right hand pane. On the right hand pane, you want to create a new D Word 32 bit value key. So just right click in the blank area right here and go to new D Word 32 bit value. And all you need to do here is just type out a name called Bing search and then enabled inside this box. And once you've done that, leave it as a zero because that is turned off. So double click on it and you can see here it's set to zero by default. You can click OK here. You're OK to go. And that should impact it straight away. And all you need to do here is check your start menu or your search area. And you'll see that those uh, Internet searches and also have been turned off. So let me quickly show you here what that looks like now. So if I go to the search area you'll see that it's not looking like uh, loads of search icons there. Okay, so let's move on to the next section. You can see it's gone. Okay, so let's go uh, and do the next one, which is inside File Explorer. So let's go to the Explorer window here and go to the three dots here and go to Options. And this is something you're going to probably want to change right here. 
So in your privacy area, I'll just turn off all of these ones right here. And up the very top here, open File Explorer to Home. I'm going to put this to this PC. Go to the View tab, Show Hidden Files, Folders and Drives, and remove the check mark from Hide Extensions for Known File Types. And it should look something like that, uh, which is a much better look in my opinion. And also you will see the extensions for file types to stop you clicking on things that might be trying to trick you to click on and end up getting you infected. Another thing you might want to do is choose a browser of your choice and download the browser uh, of your choice. I'm going to go ahead and put Chrome on here and just download it and install it, but you can use whatever browser you want. If you want to use Microsoft Edge, by all means do so. I'm not going to show you how to uninstall that because most of the time that does end up breaking the system. So I'm just going to leave that as is. If you live in the EU, it will allow you to just remove the Edge itself by using the uninstall feature, which I showed you earlier. But if you live in the UK or America, unfortunately, you can't uninstall it. So if that's the case, then just remove the icon and just don't use the actual browser. So now we have Google Chrome installed here. You might want to change the default uh, browser to Google Chrome. And I'll quickly show you that because that is different. What we need to do here is basically pin this to your start if you want to, and you can also pin it to your taskbar if you wanted to. You'll probably notice now that you do have that uh, double click, right click context menu. You can change that. I'm not going to show you how to do that in this video. I have shown how to do that recently, so I don't want to go through and repeat myself. But basically, you can actually just pin this. All you need to do is come down to the show more options, and now you get the secondary uh, menu system you can hold the shift key down and get that access to that as well but we're just going to set this as default and this will change it right here inside your app section set as default and now we've got google chrome as our default and you could just remove the icons for edge off your desktop and off the taskbar okay so let's move on to the next bit which is inside your settings panel again go to your windows updates and you might want to configure your Windows updates here uh, for your liking, uh, because obviously these are going to be coming down automatically. If you see get the latest updates as soon as they're released, I've turned that off, but you might want to leave that on if you want the latest ones. I personally don't want them on. Receive updates from other Microsoft products. I'm going to toggle that on, and I'm going to notify me to restart when required and I'm going to do this right here because it will just restart automatically and you don't want to do that so set your own manual time up to when you want it to restart probably set it to when you're asleep or something like that and it will restart once the update's done when you're offline rather than doing it when you're online you might want to turn off feature updates if you want feature updates turned off I've made videos how to do that you can check my playlist also you can set this up right here uh, this is to receive updates for other Microsoft products. If you've got uh, Microsoft Office on there, it will receive that through your update section as well, rather than doing them manually yourself. So that's how you can receive those. So set that up how you like. That as a must do. On the settings panel again, inside your privacy and security, you're going to get diagnostic and feedback and all these other telemetry type ones here, inking and typing. Uh, things like that you might want to turn all of these off and there's a bunch of other ones you're going to have to go through manually and turn off the, what you don't want like speech and uh, the ones down here like location uh, camera you got also there microphone notifications you can turn some of these off if you don't want them and you don't use them just turn them all off uh, and then basically that will be that set there's quite a few here to go through. I'm not going to go through them all in this video, but call history, you get the general idea. Go through and turn all that stuff off. So that's all now done. All you need to do now is move on to the next part. Okay, so let's talk about uh, Microsoft accounts and also local accounts. I've got a local account on this system right here, and that means I'm not connected to Microsoft. If you're using Microsoft products, like for instance OneDrive, you will need a Microsoft account and you need to sign into it here and it will be attached uh, to your PC. Uh, I'm going to use a local account here because it's not connected. And again, you can go in here and you'll see local account uh, is set up here with administrator privileges. And just coming down here, local account, you can sign in with a Microsoft account if you want to right here. That's where you can do it. 
And that's pretty much it for the account side of things. Choose which one you use for your PC. And uh, again, that I think that's going to be about it. They're the ones that you would need to change. Obviously, I would change the start menu with start 11. I'm not going to show you that because she said don't install any software. And also, I would change the right-click context menu, which I've made a video out of uh, not long ago. So just follow that. and It's very straightforward and easy to do. Other than that, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. If you've got any other ones, uh, leave uh, some tips in the comment section down below. I'm pretty sure it will help him out. He's obviously not used Windows 11 before, but it is pretty straightforward. If you don't want to use scripts and you don't want to use programs, that's how you can go ahead and do it. Anyway, just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members. I appreciate the support. Have a lovely weekend and I'll catch you on the Discord server on the next video. Bye for now. <music>